They come from the coast, from the heartland, from the north and south, from the mountains and the plains. The nation's best collegiate gymnastics teams are here in Fort Worth, Texas to battle for the crown. Two days of competition to determine this year's champion. It's intensity, it's passion, it's fierce. It's the 2022 NCAA Women's Gymnastics Championship. Welcome to ESPN's Gymnastics Countdown, presented by Ozone. A preview of the Women's Collegiate Gymnastics Championship. Your host, two-time Olympic gold medalist, Shannon Miller. Hi everybody, the final eight teams have triumphed in the four regions and we are in for a spectacular championship. We in the next hour are going to dissect these teams. We're gonna talk with some of the athletes and coaches and we're gonna present the prestigious AAI Gymnastics Award to the Female Gymnast of the Year. We are here in Fort Worth, Texas at the beautiful Sheridan Fort Worth Downtown Hotel near Dickey's Arena where the competition will be held. With me is our returning panel, four of the best analysts of our sport, three-time Olympian John Roethlisberger, Olympic silver medalist and UCLA All-American Sam Peshek, legendary LSU coach Dee Dee Bro, and 2020 Olympic gymnastics coach Jess Graba. We've got eight great teams, but room for only one winner. I am so excited. We have a lot to talk about. What I'm super excited about is that we have a whole season of college gymnastics to talk about this year. What's it going to take to win? What's important now? The team that realizes they have to stay in that zone. They cannot lose their focus. They cannot get caught up in the circus that's going on around them. Keep your focus within. That team will win. Yeah, I think this is the year of the Olympians, and this is the Olympics of college gymnastics going on right now. And I think that the team that handles the pressure, because it's rising, and we're feeling it, and it's going to keep rising, the team that handles it the best is going to come out on top. This has been the best year for college gymnastics. You mentioned the Olympians. That's a huge part of it. But another contributing factor is all of the fans, not just in the stands, but it's watching big. on television and around the world. The yeah. hype around NCAA gymnastics is big this year. So the question is, which team can handle the pressure, the extra adrenaline of all the eyeballs and the pressure of the postseason? Sam, you nailed it. It's been the best season of women's college gymnastics in history. And here we are, it's April anarchy. We just got done with March Madness and this month is gonna be crazy. This competition, it's the best season. I think this is gonna be the best championships we've ever seen. It's gonna come right down to the wire and it might come down to the wire with more than one team. It could be all four of them in that last routine. It's gonna be awesome. I'm excited. I think we should get started. Start with the University of Oklahoma. The story of this team is business as usual. Usual. They just keep going. They're steady as she goes, completely consistent. They came into regionals as the number one seed, and they prove they belong here, but do they have the firepower to get to the finish line? I think they have the firepower. This, this team has no clutter. KJ, th this staff prepares this team from the beginning of the season throughout the season to be ready to be their best at the end, which is everybody's goal. There's no clutter. There's no foolishness. They get the job done. I, I really like this Oklahoma team. Well, I was able to cover Oklahoma from the beginning of the season all the way till now. And let me tell you, they are two totally different teams. Head coach KJ Kindler speaks of the youth of their team. She wasn't sure what they were capable of. They were known as the underdogs, but she really feels like they've proven themselves and I can get behind that. I think they've earned the right to not be underdogs going into this postseason. They are clean. They have technically great gymnastics. The question mark for me is do they have the difficulty on floor? Uh, to compete with some of these other teams, and can they handle the pressure of the postseason? Oh, boomer sooner. How do I love thee? Let me count the ways. No, they're a great team. I, I predicted them er, before the season started that they would be their win the winner this year, and, and KJ just has this formula, and it's amazing. She's done an amazing job there, but I want to just break it down to a couple athletes. Yes, they have some youth, you know, so many gymnasts from their underclass that compete. But I want to look at a couple of their upperclassmen, Olivia Troutman and Reagan Smith. I think they're key players to this. They collectively do five routines for this team. Reagan Smith, over the last four meets, even though she's ranked number one on beam, has only broken a 9-9 one time on that event. She's critical. Olivia Troutman has battled injuries throughout her collegiate career. She's doing two events, but she can be so impactful on those two. 
They've been very good on those, but if they can be great, outstanding on those five routines, those are the ones I want to watch and see what happens and see how that relates to their success because I think it could be a key. Yeah, I think Oklahoma's, we always think of Oklahoma and we think consistency and cleanliness. They're always clean. They're, they're very consistent. This year, not, not as much. I would think that at the beginning of the year, especially, we had some question marks about, especially on beam. They had a couple, a couple hiccups on beam early. The one thing I would say is they're, the top three teams in this group are within a tenth or tenth and a half of each other. If you have a mistake somewhere in your lineup, you don't need to count a fall. If you have a mistake and it breaks your momentum, that's going to be an issue. That could be a problem. But you that's know something deal. that's going to help Oklahoma in this postseason? There are six judges, not just four <laughs> like the regionals, but there's two more judges, which means the technicality of their gymnastics will hopefully stand out a bit more than it did in the regular season. It can go one, it point. can fall hard one way or the other with six judges. Let's also, let's angles. also remember this is a bus ride for them and they're going to travel. Their fans are going to come, going to be here. So you're going to have a That's lot true. of excitement, a lot of enthusiasm. We're here three, mile, three <laughs> hours away. They're going to travel. It's going to be great. It was really tough last year on everyone. Yeah. And you had to be really strategic and smart about how you handled last year and how you navigated it. Um, I think we did a great job there, you know, with not one of our strongest teams. This year, business, business as usual, so very normal, um, hard work, lots of no masks, which I think was a huge yeah. asset, um, both in their stamina and, and creating strength and things like that, but also in our team chemistry, like a totally different situation with your team chemistry. Um, their community again, and that made a huge difference. And now, the Ozone Inside Scoop. Gymnastics is all about reducing the amount of change from practice to competition. Podium makes that tough. Podium is what the equipment sits on at a raised level and it creates give. What does that mean for an athlete? It means your stride's gonna be a touch longer on the vault runway. It means on floor exercise, it's gonna be a little springier, which is why we see athletes go out of bounds. The beam, it's gonna shake more, which is unnerving. Teams that have more experience on a podium have an advantage. Next, our preview of the Utah Red Rocks, Crimson Tide, and the Minnesota Gophers. This is Gymnastics Countdown, presented by Ozone. SPN's Gymnastics Countdown, presented by Ozone. Next up, we have the University of Utah, and this team has shown so much grit, especially at regionals. That was a tough competition with Alabama, and they pulled it out in the end with some amazing beam scores that they threw. Number one beam team in the country, but is that what it's going to come down to? Just what, what's their path to victory this weekend? Well, I think we just saw their path to victory at, at regionals. I think that's what they need to do again. They need to, they, it would be better to be a little stronger at the beginning of the meet, but uh, when it comes down to beam, they seem to be able to turn it on. Uh, I'm not I wouldn't be 100% comfortable relying on beam at the end of the at the end of the meet, but uh, they seem to be up to the task. Well, they're number one on beam in the entire country, and I think that moment in particular is a defining moment for Utah. Not only to be you know, up against the wire, but to handle it and score two perfect tens, that's tough to do. We've all finished on beam before, and they were able to rise to that pressure. So for me, they're walking into this NCAA championships with a whole new level of swagger and confidence. Well. Beam is the equalizer, and I, the number one team in the country on Beam, they are hot rocks on that event, and if it comes down to the last person on the last event, they're going to they're gonna bring it home because they are that strong. Across the board, it's, they're kind of even with, some, with a lot of the, the better teams in this meet, but balance Red, Beam, Red balance Rock, Beam. Red Rocks is hot rocks. Red Rocks are hot rocks. <laughs> and I want to just back up to what Sam said. I think that's a good point. They, they do have a confidence, and I think that is a big moment. When you can go to Beam, I've never done Beam, but I'm guessing. You go there and you, you hit in a clutch situation like that, it, it, that is huge. But it's been almost three decades since Utah has won a national title. Greg Mars in 1995. But we're always talking about Utah as, as maybe this is their year, this is their year. But I do think this year has a different feel to them. Like it, it, it could be. They're, they're a different team. But one thing I want to bring up is at regionals, they had eight individuals do one event. And, and it worked for them. And maybe it'll be fine. But you're, they have such a big roster competing and eight individuals doing one event. You got to sit there. You got to wait. And you have to be perfect when it's your turn at the national championships. And that makes me a little nervous. Abby Paulson might get back in the lineup in a couple more events. I think she's key to 
key to that team, uh, really a, an important person to that team. I'll be watching her. The individual thing doesn't bother me. It yeah. really doesn't because this meet is so fast. And you've got so much going on. Stay in your zone. Stay in that red zone that they get in. And I don't think the individuals competing is is going to affect is them you negatively. Is you, and you feel like that? I'm like sweating over here. <laughs> I, I can't even imagine doing one event and having to wait for my turn and possibly see other scores and see all of these amazing athletes and competitions and routines and you're getting cold and you're cheering for others. I want to be in the groove. I want to go, go, go. Right. And I think that's, I think it's tough. They you practice guys, that. Yeah, I, they I, practice I, that. I agree with you. I think that's hard. I, I, I think sometimes you're just too jazzed up. If you've been sitting a while and you watch everybody else, you're watching the, the scores go up, maybe you've had, and some of these kids might have to sit three rotations. That's gonna be, that is a difficult thing, not to come in too jazzed up, or maybe, I don't think you're gonna be coming in La you know, lacking you energy. You gotta be a microwave. You might be too much energy. You gotta guys, heat up quick. You keep talking about things that they've already proven they can handle. What they haven't proven is consistency on vault. We talk about beam usually being the make or break event and this NCAA championships, it's vault. Can you stick your vault on the day when the green flag is up? Leave it to Sam to bring us back to earth. <laughs> How did you do it? I mean, this year you seem to be kind of hitting your stride at the right time. Maybe go into the early prep that got you here. What got us here, I think, is actually the prep that started last year. The pandemic and having to train athletes through that really taught us how to pivot on our toes and be aware of changes and not be afraid of them. So leading into this year, one of the things that we weren't afraid of was making changes in lineups and making chain-ups in lineups even within an event, which is unusual for the history of Utah gymnastics, but I think it's paid off well. And obviously you can see we did some of that at the semifinals and the finals of the regional rounds and it worked out well. In our regionals preview, Didi, you talked about how Alabama is always championship ready, and we will see. But Sam, I'm, I love this team because they are, they have the depth, but they are ready for adversity and they just pick it up. If an athlete is injured, we'll talk about that. They just step up and they get the job done. I agree, and I covered them throughout the season, and I think they've been consistently underrated. Like you mentioned, they have depth and they have buy-in from every single athlete on their team. I think a lot of us in the gymnastics community were nervous after Luisa Blanco's injury at SECs, but the data doesn't lie, and they've scored a 198 in the last five of their seven competitions, the last one being without Luisa as full strength. So I think they're gonna be hungry and I think they're gonna be in contention for this national title. You know, they, they start on bars, which is on paper their best event. They're clean, they're tight, they do a good job. They are, they're gonna have to do their very, very best. They're gonna have to, all those vaults that they threw all season throughout the season and were not really great have gotten good. They are sticking vaults, they're doing things, they're doing things really well, doing it right. And I think as we move through this competition, we're going to see them gain momentum because of the depth that they have and the confidence of being on the podium two or three times a season already. Yeah, I think the, I would agree. I think bar, starting on bars is a good thing for them. Um, it's their biggest advantage over the other team. If they want to get into the next round, they need to be to beat Utah or Oklahoma or Minnesota. Mm -hmm. Their biggest advantage is, is on bars. So they're going to have to really come out of the gate yeah. strong because I don't think that there's much separation on vault when they're finishing up at the end of the meet. You're not going to be able to separate yourself that much. You really got to come out and separate yourself early in this meet. You know, this might be Dana Duckworth, head coach Dana Duckworth's best, best coaching job since she's taken over. And, and, and Sam, you brought up uh, Luisa Blanco, the 2021 SEC all around champion. And, and Alabama averaged over a 198 in the two days of regionals without her, with her doing one event. And, and ironically, and this might sound weird, is I'm concerned about her getting back in the lineup in a way. How much has she been able to train? When you have an injury, you know you've been there. You know, have you been able to put the numbers in? And they've been good without her. Now is it a challenge now to readjust? And has she done enough beam routines? Has she not done enough vaults? I don't think she'll be in on floor yet, but who knows? And, and they're a great team. Dana Duckworth and this team have answered the call every time. And I'm not going to doubt them, but that's one thing I want to watch is how ready is Luisa Blanco and how much is that injury going to hurt? They're a great the team. They're a great team with her and without her. Absolutely. She'll make a difference, definitely make a difference. Consistency is going to carry this rotation. Yeah, Louisa is important, but I think Lily Hudson is just as important, if not yes. more so. I think um, 
at least the last couple meets, how Lily goes is how the team is going to go. And she's been pretty much lights out. Mm -hmm. And it feels like, too, when you talk about a national championship team, they, they have veterans, they have upperclassmen that are great, but don't they always seem like they have that one new gymnast, that one freshman that comes in and is just an ace? That fills in, and you're just like, wow. It lights the fire. It keeps everyone else yeah. going. Yeah, That's it pu pushes need. the top. Pushes I also top. think with a team like Alabama that has faced adversity late in the season with Luisa's injury, that creates this camaraderie and this union within the team that everybody, top to bottom, wants to do a good job for Luisa, for the team. And so I think that actually adds an element of bringing them together that's going to elevate them in this competition. Well, their rotation is in their favor. Starting on bars, their best event, they have grown and matured on vaulting throughout this entire season. I'm not going to count them out. Roll yeah. Tide. Roll Tide. Not going to say it. Say it. <laughs> Roll say Tide. It. Roll Tide. Wow. Oh, wow. You know when a team has that it factor and everyone keeps asking me like why this team, what's different? And I just look at the whole journey, you know. One of the big things is that it takes time to create greatness. You know that. You take over after a legacy and everyone thinks it's gonna happen tomorrow and it takes time. It's the right people in place, it's the right culture in place. And what's exciting is this is my eighth year as head coach and I feel as if it's finally at a place where I get it, which then helps the athletes know a clear goal. It's just been an awesome journey to watch them grow. As a team, it would just mean the world because we just want the opportunity to go out there and show the world what we're capable of because we see it every day. We are a national championship team, so we just want the opportunity to show the world. Closing out this group, the first session is the University of Minnesota, and they have had a great season at home, but can they bring those scores on the road here to Fort Worth? We're going to see this weekend. What I'm listing, looking at is here they are starting on balance beam, ranked number 22. This is their toughest event, and that's a tough place to start. Well, my alma mater, the Golden Gophers, go Gophers, row the boats, Gaiuma. They got two studs, maybe the best tandem in all of women's gymnastics, Anna Loper, Lexi Ramler. They have to do great. But here's what I'm looking at, the rest of the team. And I look back at their last three competitions, Big Tens, two days of regionals, and I looked at beam and bars. And I feel like 9-9, and up is what you got to be focused on. 99 average is 198. You're going to have to get that to advance, I feel like. On those two events in the last three meets, they had 61% of their routines were below a 99. As good as Anna Lopar and Alexi Ramler are, you can't have 61% of your scores be below a 99 if you want to advance, in my opinion. That's right. Yeah, last I checked, you needed more than two scores for, for your vault or your bar rotation to, to advance. I do think that. Lexi and Anna are going to be probably just continue doing what they've been doing. They're they're going to keep being lights out. It, the four girls up that are first, first, second, third, and fourth, they need to set the table. I'm not I'm not sure that I've seen that yet. Um, can they bring an A game that we haven't seen yet and start starting off with a 985 or 9875? That's what it's going to take, I think, to get them to move on. Well, it's a big stage and. I just don't see a pathway for, for this team to be able to advance. I'm, I'm happy that they're here. Congratulations. I love, I love this coaching staff, and it's a great program. But this is the national championships, and I agree with John. The numbers just don't show it. A 22 ranking on beam, and you start on beam, but they're ranked number two on floor. That gives them a little bit of hope that they can pick up some momentum and move into the competition. Well, they have one of the most veteran teams on the competition floor. 90% of their teams competed here last year, although it was a little bit different. There were no fans in the arena, but they do have that level of experience that some of the other teams don't have. But a factor that I want to talk about, and I think it comes into play, is with Anna Loper and Lexi Ramler. This is their last NCAA championships. And when I was at my last NCAA championships, there was a lot of nerves because you have this thought, win or lose, this is my last meet I will ever do in my career. And I think for two outstanding gymnasts, they're going to have that thought once or twice throughout the meet. So can they handle those nerves in a pressure situation like the NCAA championships? There's no pressure like national championships. Here's the thing. If you're Minnesota and you got Lexi Ramler and Anna Loper, you, you got to quote a great American. I believe it was Lloyd Christmas that said, you're saying I got a chance. <laughs> they got a chance. There's always a chance. There is. Let's talk about your rotation, starting mm -hmm. on beam, yep. coming right out of the chute. You know, you've warmed up, you've been back in the locker room. Now you're coming out for the 
four minute warm up. So let's start on beam. How, how's that going to go? Well, you know, for us, BEAM is an event that we are very good at, and we're excited to be able to start there, and we really think it's going to set the stage for the rest of the meet. If we can go in and hit six solid routines, we think we're just going to keep going up after that. So uh, we've, been, we've been practicing that rotation all week long, and we're ready for it. Coming up, the Gators, the Wolverines, and a few words with Olympians Jade Carey and Jordan Childs. This is Gymnastics Countdown, presented by Ozone. Welcome back to Gymnastics Countdown, presented by Ozone. And now, a few words with Olympians and NCAA individual qualifiers, Jade Carey and Jordan Childs. Jade, you have had a whirlwind of a year. Congratulations on all, all of your success last year. How has the transition to college been this year? Um, it's been a little bit challenging. Um, it's just so different, like the schedule is different, and. The gymnastics is different, like the skills are easier, but I've been focusing so much on the perfection aspect of everything instead of just how difficult I can make all my routines. So that's definitely been different. <laughs> What's been fun about this year in college gymnastics? It's been so fun um, being a part of a team. I haven't really been a part of a team growing up, so it's been really nice to be in the gym with everyone and competing every weekend is just so much fun. and just going out there and doing the sport that I love every single day. <laughs> You've been incredibly consistent in the all around. Was it tough to compete every single weekend? Um, I would say in the middle, I got pretty tired. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I think it was just something that I had to get used to um, because in elite, I competed like th three times and now it's every weekend. So I just had to get used to it, I think. Jordan, congratulations on qualifying for an individual spot on floor and on bars. What does this mean to you? You know, it means the world to me. But first off, let me say I love your fit. <laughs> it's on point. I Thank love you. it. Um, but honestly, I'm just excited to be here, being able to be able to compete for at least two events for UCLA is definitely a huge thing. And I'm just excited. You had a whirlwind year last year. How has this year compared? You know, it's a different Jordan, I would have to say, compared to the elite world and the college world. And I've had a lot more fun being able to just show a different side of me in my floor routines, me on beam, on any event, really, and just being able to have fun. And, you know, elite is elite. Everybody knows what that's like, and I'm just excited that I'm able to get out of that comfort zone. How do you feel about representing UCLA on this level as a freshman? It's a huge deal. I mean, having those four letters across your chest or on a Leo is definitely a huge thing. But I just have to say I'm honored. I'm so excited that as a freshman I get to experience something so amazing, especially NCAAs, and it's just a dream come true. We are coming to the Sunshine State and the University of Florida, and man, Florida is on their game, putting up some huge scores. And I feel like this might be their year. This is theirs to lose. They're ranked number two or three in every event. They're on fire. They have, and let me tell you, they have captured the ABCs of this championship. They attack, they breathe, they stay focused, and they're courageous. They throw big difficulty. I have every confidence in the world that this team is the rock. And let me tell you why. Trinity Thomas, she's in the middle. She is the star, but there are so many jewels around her. I mean, we could talk all day about Florida. Didi, completely agree with you. And I think Florida is a team that not only could they have the potential to score tens throughout their lineups, they've proven that they can score multiple tens on multiple events in the same meet. That's right. And a lot of other teams, I think, has that potential, but they haven't proven that. Mm -hmm. Florida has. That's so right. I think everybody is going to be gunning for Florida in this competition. I, I think the thing that we all need to really come to terms with and realize is that Dee Dee just pulled a rock out of her pocket. <laughs> I'm going to take that rock and move that rock right over there, holding down my papers with that. No, but here's the thing about Florida, kind of like Utah. You know, Utah is one of those teams, just legendary program. You always expect maybe this will be the year, maybe this will be the year. I feel like Florida is that way too. And in the last few years have been, it's been tough for Florida. 2019, a disastrous regional competition. They didn't qualify to nationals. 2020, they're ranked number two in the country. Obviously, it was a, a shortened season that year. 2021, number two in the country again. Then Trinity Thomas gets hurt. I felt like that took a little That's bit right. of the wind out of their sails. Here we are in 2022. Guess where they're ranked? 
Locked and loaded. Locked Damn. and loaded. ABC <laughs> all the way. They're number two again. And, but it, it does feel like a, team, a yeah. team of destiny. It's hard to deny that, that this year could very well be different than those years before. Yeah, I think what Florida brings that no other team brings is they have like the bookends on every event. They, they, they start off with Megan Skaggs. She sets the table with a 9-9 almost every time or higher. And then you get to clean up with Trinity on every event. So I do think that that is one strength they have that no other team has. And I'm going to go, I, I feel like I'm missing out on some of the, uh, the, the cool talk. So I'm going to say they have done the three Ps, okay? <laughs> they have prepared their athletes. They have, pr they have protected their athletes. Mm. They yes. protected their kids all year. And yeah. now they're peaking at the right mm. time. Wow. Good that point. Was wow. Okay. Good. But, you know, we, we have not talked about Leanne Wong. That, that, she comes in there nice and quiet at the end of that bar lineup and just crushes it. They're, they've got everything. They, they know yeah. built-in deductions. They they know how to hit a clean set, but they bring the excitement and some big gymnastics. Yes. Here's, here's one athlete I want to bring up. And, and this athlete does not have to be great for Florida to win. Um, but if she is, I think Florida wins for sure. And it's Sloan Blakely. And Sloan has had a little bit of an up and down season here and there. And she's had, you know, some mistakes and maybe a little rough, but she also is capable of 995 across the board. So if she does that, they have got so many other good athletes. There's no way they don't win the meet. You know, they could still win without that. But I'm telling you, if she does that, I will guarantee Florida wins this. Talk about the journey this year, getting your team ready to be their very best now. This year, really, this uh, journey started post-COVID, coming back to a sense of normalcy that uh, this team was just, and everybody was just wanting so much. Um, I actually, at the beginning of this journey, felt like I had an entire team of freshmen. Um, it really was challenging for everybody to get back to normal and want to do everything and be in person all the time. And the fatigue set in pretty quickly. Uh, but it was really nice to see that level off. And really just the mentality from last year, the co core, the heart and soul yeah. of this team, just carried over and just elevated uh, throughout well, the Well, the maturity season. shows. The maturity shows the, the what, what Trinity and, and Megan, what those kids have been able to do, and many, many more. We talked about the, the centerpiece of Trinity being that centerpiece, and you've got so many jewels mm -hmm. that circle, circle her. Talk about your depth. Really, uh, we have lots of gems, mm -hmm. uh, lots of sparkle. Um, Trinity really um, is, is, is a huge part of our core. Uh, Megan Skaggs, Alyssa Bauman, our fifth years, really have done a fantastic job of making the most of an opportunity yeah. uh, that wasn't originally there. Now it's time for last year's winner, the University of Michigan, and they come in as the defending champions, but I feel like they have an underdog story. They are not stacked with Olympians and world champions, yet they lead the country on vault and floor. Sam, is that going to be enough? Well, they started this season extremely hot. I think a lot of people thought they were bulletproof with the high scores they were getting right out of the gate this season. I was fortunate enough to watch their practice and the way they train, they're very calm, cool, collected, and they genuinely enjoy gymnastics, which I think puts them above the rest in a lot of categories. And so their genuinely, genuine love for the sport, I think really helps them on the competition floor. They did have a little lull in the, in the middle of the season or some mistakes here and there, but I actually think it's to their benefit because you don't want to be perfect all season long coming into postseason. You want to have some adversity to have some improvements here in the postseason. Yeah, and I think if you're going to talk about being bulletproof, if they're bulletproof, it's probably floor and vault. Uh, right now, I would think that beam is probably my biggest concern for them. They are de definitely much better on beam and on uh, floor and vault than they are on beam. And I, finishing the meet on beam is going to be a struggle. Uh, they better have a big lead going into that last rotation because I just don't know if there's going to be enough room to make up ground when on your worst event. There's just not a lot of gaff there to make up. Well, but you know, when you're ranked number one on floor and they're going to start on floor and then you go to their next number one event, vaulting, they could have a margin of lead. They could have a little bit, yeah. uh, enough to give them momentum and, and, and feed that fire. And as you go forward, this team been there, done that, I believe in, in what this team's capable of doing. More than half of their girls in their vault roster have already scored a perfect 10 
in a competition, not all at the same time, three of them at the same time, but not all five or six yet, but they do have that potential. But the mistakes that I see come when they try to be too perfect on vault, when they try to stick, yep. and that's not just for Michigan, that's for all of these teams. They're adding adrenaline and pressure for the postseason, and they're also on podium. So finding those landings, Didi, is gonna I know, be a little you're, you're tougher. talking about if the, the if the judges judge the real technique of how these vaults are supposed to be done, Michigan can give us a clinic because they are in the air before they start that twist. They are twisting, finishing their twist, and that's why they're sticking these vaults. That's why they're doing such a good job. Technically, they're correct. Well, there's two actually moments that I want to look at, and ironically, it's on the two events that they're ranked number one on, vault and floor. And, and they're great on those events, but Raina Gugino on vault has struggled lately. And, and what's going to happen in that spot? Will they change that spot? Does she have that vault back together now? Certainly, they could win vault with just five gymnasts, but it just leaves a little question mark. And anytime you have question yeah. marks, it, it, it gives you pause. The other one is on floor. Sierra Brooks did not do floor exercise at the regionals. Will she do floor here? She was just resting is what, what I've heard. I don't know. But if she's not on floor again, that's another question mark. Natalie Wojcik on floor has not knocked it out of the park week after week. She struggled a little bit here and there. So those two, even though they're their best events, those two little micro moments make me go, hmm, I want to I watch those and see how they pan out. And they kind of relate to an interesting statistic about Michigan. Their best scores this season have come with seven or eight gymnasts in their competing roster. We talked about Utah earlier, how they have close to, they had 14, I think, at the last regional yep. meet on their competing roster. Yep. But they had nine at the regionals, did Michigan. That one spot, when you're talking about a half, 10th or 10th, that can win it for them. And we talk about those all-arounders, John, and Gabby, Sierra, Natalie, the whole roster of all-arounders, they don't have built-in deductions. I have made sure that my team understands that last year was its own journey and this year is its own journey as well and that i i don't i don't want them to feel the pressure of expectation sierra michigan are the reigning national champions how badly does your team want to repeat i think extremely extremely bad i think we got a huge taste of what that was actually like like last year was the first time that michigan obviously won the ncaa championship and that was a huge milestone for us but for those of us that are returners, like we felt all of the Michigan pride that came from that and we felt like the celebration and the pride and it was it was an experience that we loved and we would love to do that again. And I think it's just served as more motivation for us and I think just even getting to the hotel, like we're pumped and we're really excited to compete. And now the Ozone Inside Scoop. 2022 was the year of the 10. They were handing out 10 O's like they hand out Girl Scout cookies in March. Everybody was getting a 10, but don't expect a lot of 10s here at the NCAA championships. Regular season, there are two judges per event. At the regional round, they go to four judges per event. Here at the NCAA championships, six judges per event. Four more sets of eyes than you get in the regular season. That means more deductions. That means fewer 10s. Still gonna be great, still gonna be high scores, but don't expect quite as many 10 O's. Coming up, a couple of Tigers, Ann Suni and Darian. This is Gymnastics Countdown, presented by Ozone. We have two schools left, so we're coming up to Auburn. Auburn, I feel like this team has such heart, but they also have the Olympic champion, Sunisa Lee. So I think with Sunisa, what comes into play is not just that Suni effect we all talk about, bringing the scores, bringing the great gymnastics. I believe that she brings this belief in themselves and the great gymnastics this entire team has already been doing. Now, Jess, you've coached the Olympic champion, Suni Lee, obviously, and your brother, Jeff, coaches her at Auburn. So you have some insight into this. Oh, I can yeah. only imagine how this prediction is going to go. Oh, this won't be biased. Go, go brother, ahead. By the way. Um, yeah, I don't want to talk about him. We'll talk about the, the star of the show. We'll talk SUNY first. I think the SUNY show or the SUNY circus, which I've been a part of as well, it gets, uh, it can be fatiguing, it can be tiring, but it also, I think, has maybe prepared these, the whole team for this type of an environment. I do feel like all the eyes on them all year, all the pressure, all the stress and, and the anxiety, uh, it, it maybe, or at least hopefully, has prepared them. I do think that, that they've done a good job of prepping the team for, for this distraction, for the distraction factor. And I think that's gonna hopefully bode well for them. And I think SUNY has elevated the rest of the team, but here's the fact. 
the rest of the team needs to be elevated, and SUNY has to hit it out of the park if, if Auburn is going to advance. And they got away with it at, at regionals. You know, they had to beat Kentucky. Kentucky's a very good team, not taking anything away from them, but they're not going to get away with that against Michigan and against Florida if they want to advance to the next round and give themselves a chance to win the NCAA championship. They've only broken 198 one time. So they've got to be top to bottom, especially that big hitter, the home run hitter at the end. They've got to be on their game. Well, you know, it's been seven years since they were on this big stage. And, of course, that year they were here, they made the Super Six. But um, it's more than SUNY on this team. We've got to, you've got to crank out a lot of scores, big scores, to get to SUNY. And if you're going 985, 985, that's not going to be enough. So she brings the energy, she brings the strength, but that team has got to be leading up to her. Um, I, I see a pathway, but it's going to be a hard one. We talk about other contributing players on their team, and Sophia Groth and Cassie Stevens are two individuals that I've been really impressed with. They're all-arounders, they've been really consistent, but I think the key factor for Auburn is Darian Goborn and Drew Watson. She's they have, exciting. They have high scoring potential, they're exciting mm -hmm. to watch, but sometimes the nerves and the adrenaline makes them bounce out of their vaults and their floor routines. So if they can settle those nerves and absorb the landings, I think they're going to be uh, in consideration. I agree. Well, they, they you make got, a the, you got the podium okay. factor the podium, here. That, exactly. Yeah. That's exactly what I was going to say. You have the podium factor, and if you have inexperience or you're not practicing or training, um, competing on a podium a lot, man, if you bounce out in a regular competition, you're going to go flying on a podium. Yeah. And I think to John's point earlier, they did struggle a little bit on the first event. They were fourth at regionals, fourth coming out of the first event. I do think the team grew up a little bit there. I saw that the rest of the the rest of the team settled it, settled it down. It wasn't SUNY settling it down and set her up for the 10 on beam. So I do think that hopefully they grew a little bit and they were prepared for the moment. All right, we're here with Auburn head coach, Jeff Graba. Nice to see you. <laughs> so weird. Go ahead. <laughs> this season, more than any other, there's been more crowds, there's been more publicity, there's just been more notoriety, and, and obviously for Auburn with the Olympic gold medals with SUNY on your team, you're going to have a lot more of that anyways. How are you handling, how is the team handling it, how are you guys managing it? It's been tough on, on the staff. It's been tough on SUNY, obviously, because the attention's a, a lot on her. But it's also been tough on our team because, you know, I don't think anybody signed up for this. I think everybody thought this was going to be great and a lot of fun, but it's like we're reality TV stars at this point. And, and uh, you know, reality does sink in after a while. But um, but I, did, I do think it's pushed us closer together. I think our team's better because of it. And uh, I do think we're, we're much closer knit because of it. But you know, managing the distractions. I don't know if I've, I've managed them as much as we just try to adjust on the on the fly. So we've been working on togetherness a lot, and I feel like the past couple of meets, like we've started off so like nervous and like a little bit scattered. So for us to finally just like come together, I think it's important for us to start off like that because I think when we're doing everything together, we can do anything. I totally agree. Um, there's nothing like an Auburn crowd, so I feel like we're really. Um, kind of used to that and with you know SUNY being in our t on our team I feel like she's brought you know a lot of people not only to Auburn meets to but to many of the meets that we've been to so we we know what a big crowd is like and we have each other and we we've, we've been through the hard and we've we've been through it but we're ready for this moment we are down to our final school, and that is the University of Missouri. And they might just be considered the Cinderella story of this competition. They have fought every step of the way to make it into this final eight. But do they have a path to victory? I mean, to say they fought to get in here is an understatement. They, they did their best Johnny Cash impression, and they literally <laughs> walked the line a quarter of a tenth to get into these finals. And they're the Rodney Dangerfield of women's gymnastics. They get no respect, yet time and time again, here they are. But here's what I want to do. I want to break down their scores, much like we did with Minnesota and we talked about that critical 9-9 barrier. 9-9 and above help you win, 9-9 and below don't. And if you look at their vault bars and beam in their last three meets alone, almost 90% of their scores on just those three events were below a 9-9. If they want to give themselves a chance against this field to advance to the finals, they've got to find a way to get those scores, get a few more 9-9s out of those scores. Yeah, I agree. I think the the main thing that they have shown all year is the ability to stay in the hunt. They're always close. Mm -hmm. They're always lurking right behind you or right ahead of you. I think that the big thing is can they 
like blow the doors off. I'm not sure they have the firepower, but if any of the other teams even struggle at all, open the door, crack the door open at all, the Missouri's just going to walk right through it, and they've done it several times already this year. Well, this coaching staff's done a great job, and um, Shannon Walker, SEC Coach of the Year, that's a huge honor. This team has fought every step of the way, and, you know, we keep talking about the fight. Well, there's some fight in that Tiger, and they – I'm not going to count them out. They're not really ranked anywhere in the top, except for on floor, they're in the top ten. Their rankings are, are pretty below most of the teams that are here. They've got a hard, hard road ahead of them. A pathway to victory, I'm not sure, but a lot of respect and a lot of fight, and this team deserves a lot of credit. Well, it's a team that's building, and something that I've been impressed with is their competition demeanor. So I watched them at SEC right. Championships, and they had a mistake on balance beam, which could give a sense of anxiety to the rest of the team. Sienna Schreiber, their best all-arounder, was loose, she was calm and smiley, mm -hmm. she was dancing around, and it didn't phase her one bit. And a team with that kind of demeanor and this type of pressure, I think will do big things, whether it's this NCAA season or future NCAA seasons. Well, we talk about all of these teams with such great experience, years and years of experience. You have to start somewhere. You have to get started, and that's what Missouri is doing. They have a huge future ahead. But Shannon, I know you're a Beamer, and so am I. So I want everybody to give an ode to them on Balance Beam. They have the most unique Balance Beam. It's stunning to watch their artistry and their dance in and out of skills. It's Listen, in the summer, we really need to focus on this aggressive mindset and, and really drive it home. And, and we knew that we had to reward those young ladies that were willing to do that, even if it meant mistakes early on and continue to reward them. There was actually some meets that we had a mistake, you know, people trying to cast to handstands and they had a fall. We actually had one at the Raleigh Regional in the, in the final, as a matter of fact, from our, one of our very, very steady Eddie all around her, Sienna Schreiber. We got done with that rotation. I said, hey, I love you being aggressive. That's what we've built our team on, and that's how we're gonna be successful for the rest of this meet. Another Ozone Inside Scoop. This is the 50th year anniversary of Title IX and the 40th year anniversary of NC2A women's sports. We have to pay homage to the trailblazers that worked so hard and fought to create these opportunities for the student athletes and the coaches that we enjoy today. It's important for every female student athlete and coach to realize how we got here and never take these opportunities for granted. One more segment to go. The presentation of the AAI Award and our experts make their picks. This is Gymnastics Countdown, presented by Ozone. For more than 40 years, AAI has presented an annual award to the most outstanding college female gymnast in the country. This is an incredible award. This is the Heisman Trophy of Gymnastics. Tell us a little bit about this award. It's cherished. The student athletes really honor this prestigious presentation. It's a lifetime, and it's the lifetime that they spend in college. It's an award that represents all of their hard work and the top senior gymnast. And there's a process. So tell us about it. The special thing about this award is that it's a coach's pick. So they submit athletes to be in consideration. They narrow it down to six finalists, and then they all vote on a winner. It is such an honor. Let's take a look at the finalists and the winner. From Stanford University, Kyla Bryant. It's an incredible honor um, and a privilege to be um, to accept this award. From Auburn University, Darianne Goborn. What does it mean to you to be a finalist? It means a lot to me. Honestly, I didn't really know, you know, what the award was really about at first. And, you know, when I looked into it, it's just, I just feel really grateful, honestly. From the University of Alabama, Lexi Graber. How does it feel to be a two-time AAI award recipient? It's, I have no words. I mean, coming into college gymnastics my freshman year, I really just, I knew I was having fun with the sport. I wasn't thinking about getting accolades or, you know, winning. I just wanted to have fun and have fun with my team. So to get the extra stuff is just, it means the world. From the University of Minnesota, Ona Loper. It's such an honor. There are so many incredible seniors this year, so it truly is an honor to be awarded this. From the University of Florida, Trinity Thomas. I think it's a blessing, honestly. I've worked so hard and to be an AI Award finalist among these other amazing seniors <laughs> is amazing. 
from the University of Michigan, Natalie Wojcik. I'm very proud to be a finalist. As a kid, I had the USA Gymnastics magazine subscription, and I used to flip through and see who the AI Award finalists were, and I looked forward to seeing who won it every year. So it's just truly an honor to be named among these incredible athletes, and I'm happy to be here. And the winner of the 2022 AAI Award is... This year, <laughs> Natalie, you are the 2022 AAI Award winner. Okay, panel, time for predictions. Our favorite part, who are the four that are going to move on and who takes the prize? Well, it, this is our favorite part, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stick to the rankings pretty much. Not, not too exciting, but I'm going Florida, Michigan. Oklahoma, Utah is my four finalists, and I picked them in the preseason. I picked Oklahoma. I'm taking them wire to wire. I'm going to pick them as my winner. The parody in this thing is beautiful. I'm going to go with Oklahoma and Alabama coming out of the first session, Florida and Michigan advancing, and Florida to win it. I'm switching things up, guys. In the first session, I'm going with Alabama and Utah. I think Alabama is on the rise. They have the depth to get yep. it done. And I feel the same about Utah. It's a different energy this year. They're hungry, and I think they can get the job done. For the second session, I'm going Florida, Michigan. And I think Florida's going to take the prize. Sooner Nation going to be mad at you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think I'm going to go with Oklahoma and Alabama for the same reason. I think Alabama's on the rise uh, in the first one. Florida, and then I'm going to go wild card, and I'm going to pick up. Big surprise, Auburn, uh -huh. to, to do it. That's I do an think emotional get choice. Yeah, it's an emotional. <laughs> never never do that emotionally. But then I do think Florida, yeah. it's Florida's year. Are I you sure you're not so. actually Jeff? Because we can't tell you <laughs> to apart. <laughs> I'm, I'm going Florida, Michigan, Oklahoma, of course, Utah. And I feel like I should abstain from the final because I'm from Oklahoma. I live in Florida, but I, I think it's Florida's year. Oh. I do. Ooh. All right, there you have it. But this has been uh, a great time. This is a can't miss competition, a can't miss weekend. I hope you all tune in. Thank you so much for watching Gymnastics Countdown presented by Ozone. And thank you so much to the Sheridan for having us out. Make sure to watch and thanks so much for joining us. <laughs>